Hello everyone and welcome to Metagame Mastery where it's not just about what the card does but how it impacts the game. GP Las Vegas was this past weekend and they dumped a ton of core 2019 previews on us. Today we're going to take a look at all of them including Nicol Bolas, a couple new Ajani's, Sarkon Vol, Vivian, and many many more. If you enjoy our content, click that subscribe button so you get access to all our latest videos. And if you're looking to support the channel, we have an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Without further ado, big time, go time, let's go. Vivian of the Arcbow is 6 CMC, 4 colorless, green green for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 5. Her plus 2 ability is put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on up to 1 target creature. Her minus 3 ability is target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. And her minus 9 ability is creatures you control gain plus 4 plus 4 and trample until end of turn. So this is basically what you'd expect for a mono green planeswalker. This is the planeswalker deck version of Vil Vivian Reed. And you can tell that the power level is different. It's actually pretty solid. You're getting a lot of loyalty for six mana. And based on your board state, if you have a creature out, she does a lot of really good things. She helps increase your board presence. Uh, she has removal on her and a very fine finishing ultimate. The problem is if you don't have anything in play, she literally does nothing. Vivian's Jaguar is 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a green for a 3-2 Cat Spirit with Reach. You can also pay 2 colorless and a green to return it from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only if you control a Vivian Planeswalker. So this is just bad. In any format, it's just bad. Costs way too much mana, does too little. The Johnny Wise Counselor is 5 CMC, 3 colors, white white, for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 5. His plus 2 ability is you gain 1 life for each creature you control. His minus 3 ability is creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. And his minus 9 ability put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature where X is your life total. So this is the planeswalker deck planeswalker uh, for a Johnny. And much like Vivian Reed, he's entirely dependent on your board state. If you have creatures out on the board, he's actually quite good. If you don't have any creatures, say you were just board wipe, he does nothing. Kind of a, an interesting twist on the original Johnny Gold main, having the creature buff, the life gain, and getting power and toughness on the board equal to your life total only this has the potential to be even bigger and more powerful with the drawback of being situational based on you have to already have something on the board to make it work court cleric is one white mana for a one one creature human cleric with lifelink it gets plus one plus one as long as you control on a Johnny Planeswalker. So, I mean, this thing's just strictly decent. It's a 1-1 one, one lifelinker that could be a 2-2 two, two in the right situation. It's just strictly decent. On the other hand, a Johnny's Pride Mate is being reprinted, which is super exciting because it is now standard legal. It's two CMC, one colorless, and a white for a 2-2 two, two Cat Soldier. Whenever you gain life, you may put a plus one plus one counter on a Johnny's Pride Mate. There are so many ways to trigger this several times a turn. This will spiral out of control very, very quickly. A Johnny Adversary of Tyrants is 4 CMC, 2 colorless, white white for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. He has a plus 1 ability, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on up to each of 2 target creatures, minus 2 ability, return target creature card with converted mana cost 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and a minus 7 ability. You gain an emblem, at the beginning of your end step you create 3 one, one white creature tokens with lifelink. This guy's awesome. For four mana, you get to bolster two 
every single turn. He can also bring back your Johnny's Pride Mate uh, if anything should happen to him. And his ultimate allows you to populate the board very quickly, very often. This guy is an absolute beastie and will definitely see standard play. White Weenie is looking really good in the upcoming meta. Now, in EDH, this guy's going to play very well with doubling season as well, because not only will he be able to ultimate as soon as you play him with doubling season in play, but that emblem will generate six 1-1 one, one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. Very out of control. I can see both of these Ajani's fitting quite well in Eilie Eternal Pro Pilgrim and Tristani Selesnia's voice EDH decks. Sarkon Dragon Soul is 6 CMC, 4 colorless red red. For a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 5, he has a plus 1 ability, he deals 1 damage to each opponent and each creature your opponents control, he has a minus 3 ability, he deals 4 damage to target player or planeswalker, and he has the minus 9 ability. Search your library for any number of dragon creature cards and put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. This guy is going to be an EDH staple. Wow, that ultimate is out of control, powerful, sick, absolute game ender. His uh, plus ability is nice just for the fact that you can get a chain whirler effect every single turn. His minus three ability really isn't going to amount to much, but that ultimate is what makes this guy worth playing. Sarkon's Whelp is 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a red for a 2-2 dragon with flying. Whenever you activate an ability of a Sarkon Planeswalker, Sarkon's Whelp deals 1 damage to any target. So this one actually could be kind of funny because it actually benefits you for having multiple different versions of Sarkon in play at the same time. If you were to run a Sarkon Vol Super Friends type build, this guy could be decent. That said, it's very corner case. It's just a fun little card. Dragon Tribal will actually be getting a ton of support in this set, as evidenced by cards like Vivictus as Maddie the Dire. He's 6 CMC. Recall as and Jund. That's black, red, green for a 6 6 Elder Dragon with flying. Whenever he attacks for each player, choose target permanent that player controls. Those players sacrifice those permanents. Each player who sacrificed a permanent this way reveals the top card of their library, then puts it onto the battlefield if it's a permanent card. So basically, you get to Chaos Warp all of your opponents every single turn with this card. That sounds good. Obviously, this is made for Commander, and it will excel there. Repeatable removal with the exponential value of being able to hit as many targets as you have opponents is super, super good. Lathless Dragon Queen is 6 CMC, 4 colorless. Red Red for a 6-6 six, six Legendary Dragon with Flying. Whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a 5-5 five, five Red Dragon Creature Token with Flying. You can pay one colorless and a red. Dragons you control get plus 1, plus 0 oh until end of turn. Holy freaking crap! I mean, this guy makes Shivan Dragon look like a punk. 6 CMC for a 6-6 six, six with Flying is already a win. Being able to get incidental value, uh, an additional dragon token every single time another dragon enters the battlefield for you is beyond Windmore. And then getting dragon tribal fire breathing is super, super powerful. Even if she's the only dragon you have on the board, it's still 
double costed fire breathing. That still works. This card is sick. Nicobolus the Ravager is 4 CMC, 1 Colus, and Grixis. That blue, black, red for a 4 4 legendary Elder Dragon with flying. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. You could pay 4 Colus and Grixis, that's blue, black, red. Exile Nicobolus the Ravager, then return him to the battlefield transformed under his owner's control. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. Nicobolus the Arisen is a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 7. He has a plus 2 ability of draw 2 cards. He has a minus 3 ability of deal 10 damage to target creature or planeswalker. Minus four ability. Put target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And a minus 12 ability. Exile all but the bottom card of target opponent's library. Oh, that is sick. I mean, the planeswalker side is easily the most powerful planeswalker we've ever seen. Just the numerical value on each and every one of those abilities is busted. He, he makes... Jace the Mind Sculpture looked like a chump. Problem is, it costs frickin' 11 mana to get him in play. That's pretty frickin' mana intensive. Let's take a look at his creature side. You're paying 4 mana for a 4-4 four, four flyer, and your opponent discards a card. This is much better in EDH, where with cards like the Ur Dragon, you can get him out as early as turn 3. And you get the additional value of making your opponents, uh, each of your opponents, discard a card. Not to mention, games should run long enough that you could potentially drop him and then have the 7 mana to flip him and get out of control fast. This guy is going to be a beast, and there will be plenty of people trying to brew this card into standard. Absolute powerhouse. All these cards that we've talked about today are super powerful. They're going right into the Ur Dragon decks, and particularly the Chaos Warp Dragon is very good in the Sign of the Ur Dragon EDH decks. We also got to see some commons, uncommons, and rares. I'm going to go through them real quick, talk about whether or not they're standard playable, and how they impact the limited game. Abnormal Endurance is 2 CMC, 1 Coalesce and Black for an instant until end of turn. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 0, and gains when this creature dies, return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. So it's a fine combat trick, won't see play outside of limited. Blood Divination is 4 CMC. Three colorless and a black for a sorcery as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, draw three cards. So a bigger Alter's Reap that costs twice as much. Sorry, we already have an upgraded Alter's Reap in standard. This will only see play in limited. Cavalry Drillmaster is two CMC, one colorless and a white for a two one human knight. When he enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus 2, plus 0, oh, and gains first strike until end of turn. So he's a bear and a combat trick. Great for pushing tempo and white weenie builds. Colossal Majesty is 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a green for an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control a creature with power 4 or greater, draw a card. So this is fine. There's obviously uh, Steel Leaf Stompy in standard right now. I don't think it needs this, but this can go into a variety of EDH decks that are just running big, dumb creatures. Declare Dominance is 5 CMC, 3 colorless green, green for a sorcery. Target creature gets plus 3, plus 3 until end of turn. All creatures able to block it this turn do so. This card sucks. Druid of the Cowl. 2 CMC, 1 colorless, and a green for a 1-3 Elf Druid. 
You can tap it to add one green mana. Being reprinted from the Kaladesh block, it's nice to see that we'll have more elf support for future uh, standard metas. Exclusion Mage is 3 CMC, 2 colorless on a blue for a 2-2 two, two human wizard. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So, mana war creatures are always good and limited. This one has the exact same CMC and it has a very relevant creature type. This is very good for wizard tribal in standard and at the same time it's super solid and limited. Keep an eye out for this card. Field Creeper is 2 CMC for an 2 1 artifact creature scarecrow with no abilities. It's fine, curve filler. You'll run this in limited if you are short on two drops. Gear Smith Guardian is 5 colorless mana for a 3 5 artifact creature construct. It gets plus two plus oh as long as you control a blue creature. So this plays into a bit of a theme where we're seeing blue interact very positively with artifacts. In the right deck, this is a very solid five five for five. Meteor Golem is seven CMC for a three three artifact creature golem. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. So every set we see something along these lines. It's a colorless removal spell for literally anything. Uh, when it comes to universal solvent equivalents, this one's pretty good. It's got legs and can uh, beat down on top of everything else. I like it. Reassembling Skeleton is being reprinted. It's 2 CMC, 1 colorless black for a 1-1 one, one skeleton warrior. You can pay 1 colorless and black, return it from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Reclamation Sage is getting reprinted. It's an EDH staple. It's 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a green for a 2-1 elf shaman when it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Guild Animator is 3 CMC, 2 colors, and a blue for a 1-3 human artificer. When it enters the battlefield, target artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness, 5-5 five, five for as long as Skilled Animator remains on the battlefield. So this thing's freaking sweet. It's an in-soul artifact on legs, which of course makes it more vulnerable. It's plus one CMC, but if you were playing in standard when Soul Artifact was around, you know how wild and out of control this can be. You can even put this on vehicles or artifact creatures that have abilities already on them. They maintain those abilities, they just get the 5-5 five, five power and toughness which can get out of control really fast. Love this card. Thud is one red mana for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice creature. Thud deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. Yeah, I like this card. Just uh, acting as removal or uh, flinging. Either way, it's really solid for only one red mana. Viashino Pyromancer is 2 CMC, 1 colorless, and a red for a 2-1 Viashino Wizard. When it enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to target player or planeswalker. I like this guy. He's a cheap wizard who has an immediate impact as soon as he hits the board. Really good bear with upside. And lastly, we have Death Baron. He's 3 CMC, 1 colorless, black black, for a 2-2 two, two zombie wizard. Skeletons you control and other zombies you control get plus 1, plus 1, and have Death Touch. That's a very powerful 
zombie lord that also acts as a skeleton lord this guy's gonna be right at home in your scarab god commander decks that's it for today if you enjoy our content click that subscribe button so you get access to all our latest videos and if you're looking to support the channel check out our amazon affiliate link in the description below this has been metagame mastery peace